Hi everyone, this is Brent Weinberg from LearnerRadiology.com. To wrap up this brain tumor lecture, we're going to go through some bonus cases. These are just going to solidify some of the concepts we've seen in the earlier videos. This would be useful as a review if you've seen those other videos. If you haven't, you may want to go check them out before you take a look at these. Otherwise, these will uh, serve as some useful uh, unknown cases that we'll just go through together. So here we have a 50-year-old woman with altered mental status and questionable seizure. Here's some images from uh, an MRI. You have a flare where you have a iso-intense to hypotense mass in the right temporal lobe. You have some surrounding edema. You're on pre-contrast T1, maybe a little bit of thin rim. Uh, there might be a little bit of hemorrhage or something associated with it, but not much. And then on post-contrast imaging, you see very avid enhancement here. For this case, you want to think about your differential for solitary enhancing parenchymal masses. That's going to include GBM, metastasis, and lymphoma. This is probably not an abscess because it was solidly enhancing. Other unusual infections would be in differential, but less likely. This happened to be a metastasis. This patient had breast cancer. It's important to remember that a significant number of metastases, like probably 40 or 50 percent, are going to have only a solitary brain lesion. So don't rule out metastasis just because you see only a single lesion. For our second case, we're looking at a 58-year-old with confusion and transient weakness. Here you have a CT. Uh, what you see on the CT is a very hyperdense mass in the left frontal lobe, causing a lot of mass effect. The Ventricles are squished to the side here. You have a lot of midline shift uh, over to the right side and a lot of edema. One of the key features on CT is that this mass is hyperdense. So think about that as we're moving along. Here we see T2. Uh, so we have, again, a well-defined mass. Maybe it's a little bit centrally necrotic, uh, but the sort of very thick rim, a lot of edema surrounding it, but relatively dark itself on T2 and flare and uh, maybe a little bit, but not, not much hemorrhage associated with this mass. Here we have pre and post contrast images. We have a iso to hypo intense mass here that enhances very avidly, very solidly enhancing. Here you have another enhancing nodule over here in the right hemisphere. So uh, that contrast is really helpful. Like maybe you wouldn't have noticed it on the flare. And uh, so that pushes you towards a different differential. Here you have to think about your differential for multiple enhancing masses. Again, similar to before, but you're upgrading metastasis and lymphoma. Uh, so then you want to think about if there are any other features you can use to differentiate them. But these are your top three. This is a case of lymphoma. I think uh, you definitely have to think about uh, those other things. When I was reading this case, I, I think I read it as metastasis and multifocal GBM. I didn't really think about lymphoma because it was multifocal and uh, because it had some central areas of necrosis. Again, as I said, you're not always going to be, you're not always going to be correct. Just I'll show you again a little bit of what's going on. Here you see again, it's relatively hypo intense on T2, so that's a nice sign for lymphoma. That's pretty bright on DWI, so that's a nice sign for lymphoma. On perfusion imaging, it's an extraordinarily avid uh, lesion. Here we have a 21-year-old woman with a seizure. What you see is a T2 and a flare image showing a little cystic uh, cortical or subcortical mass in the left cerebral hemisphere here. It's pretty well defined. It doesn't suppress on flare, but it's probably a centimeter or less. Very well defined. On pre and post contrast, uh, you get your pre-contrast on the left here. There's uh, not much going on. And on the post contrast, you see a little, if any, enhancement. Here you have a differential for minimally enhancing cortical tumor. That's going to uh, include DNAT, ganglioglioma, and PXA. It'll be more common for PXAs to have more enhancement, so you're probably going to favor these top two. A uh, low-grade glioma is certainly always in the differential for this, but you probably favor a DNAT or ganglioglioma. This one uh, turned out to be a pleomorphic xanthoastrocytoma. So as I said, you're not always going to be able to tell the difference in these tumors. Uh, so you just want to be able to give an intelligent differential, guide their resection. Here we have a 58-year-old man with headache, peripheral visual defects, and confusion. We have a CT showing a low-density mass in the left cerebral hemisphere, kind of the parieto-occipital region, but with a lot of deep extension, a lot of mass effect on that left lateral ventricle. 
Here you see a number of images from an MR. You've got a couple of flare images in the left column here. Uh, it's pretty uh, homogeneous on flare, a little bit of surrounding edema. Here you have uh, pre-contrast showing us kind of central uh, region, which is pretty, pretty, solid, uh, pretty cystic looking, and maybe some more solid components along the side. That's confirmed on your post-contrast imaging. You've got a thin wall of enhancement, maybe a more nodular area here along the medial aspect of it. So you've got your, your nodule and assist lesion. So think about your cyst and a nodule uh, differential. Uh, you think about pilocytic astrocytoma, ganglioglioma, hemangioblastoma you wouldn't necessarily think about in this case because it doesn't have, uh, you don't see a number of flow voids around it. PXA is uh, also a consideration. Uh, this one actually turned out to be uh, glioblastoma. Uh, if you looked a little closer at this nodule, you could see a little bit more of invasion of the parenchyma and it seemed a little bit more aggressive looking. Uh, but again, like giving a good differential is the key part. Uh, you're going to miss some of these. You're not always going to be right, but you've got to give a smart differential. Just to summarize these cases, uh, when you're looking at any case, think about what category it falls into, come up with your differential. But remember that some of these are going to break the rules. Just be able to come up with an intelligent differential for brain tumors. Thanks for watching this series of videos on brain tumors. We have a number of other videos on our channel uh, at Learn Neuroradiology, and you can check us out on our website at learnneuroradiology.com. If you enjoyed us, uh, be sure to click the subscribe button here.